surfing now, everybody's learning how, come on a safari with me. 21 Toyota Corolla courtesy. We all know the Corolla comes with absolutely stellar reliability, the kind of reliability that takes you over 300,000 miles. And there's actually a couple new exciting changes for the 2021 Corolla as well. So what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so there will be several different trim levels for the 2021 Toyota Corolla. First one being the L starting at $19,825. LE for $20,275. Hybrid LE for $23,400. The SE, which actually is the one we have today, that one starts at $22,000. $275 SE Nightshade Edition, which is a new trim level for the 2021 model year. That one goes for $22,975. XLE for $24,225 and lastly the XSE going for $25,725. That come with the Toyota Corolla. First one belonging to the L, LE, and XLE being a 1.8 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder, putting out 139 horsepower at 6,100 RPM, 126 pound feet of torque available at 3,900 RPM. Power sent to the front wheels through a CVT, giving you MPG numbers coming in at 30 in the city, 38 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel. But then the next power plant belonging to the SE trims as well as the XSE being a two liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder, 169 horsepower at 6,600 RPM, 151 pound feet of torque at 4,400 RPM, sent to the front wheels once again through a CVT with paddle shifters though on this particular engine setup. And we do have them today, so we will be testing to go for that particular engine setup. There actually is a six speed manual available with the SE trim level only that is the only way you're going to be able to get a six speed on the 2021 Corolla in case anybody wanted it that's where it's going to be at zero to 60 time comes in at approximately 8.2 seconds we'll be doing an acceleration test in a little bit that is going to be a 1.8 liter naturally aspirated hybrid four cylinder so there is a sport button that is located just in front of the shifter there's also an eco mode if you go with the hybrid trim level only and of course the Corolla defaults to a normal mode so really it is a normal mode all the time unless you take it out by pushing one of those two buttons but having said that let's go ahead and push the sport mode and it it did immediately downshift so to speak we're in a cvt of course but it is going to hold the rpms in a much higher level giving you more power on demand it's also going to adjust the throttle sensitivity and the steering sensitivity as well. I can definitely notice a difference there between the normal driving mode and the sport driving mode that I just put it in when it comes to the steering sensitivity. So I will mention that. But having now said all that, what do you guys say? Let me push the shifter all the way to the back and to the left that is actually gonna give me full manual shift mode. So I'm going to be in charge of the shifting here. And let's do a quick little paddle shifter test here. And let's see how quickly these paddle shifters are actually going to react for us here. All right, got her straight away here. Let's do this. Huh. Actually does it shift for you. I got a surprise. That's pretty darn cool. I like that the paddle shifters are there. This is kind of simulated because it is a CVT transmission after all. So it's not really rowing through any gears, but I love that they're there. And I having said that they do actually react pretty darn quickly. But again, they're paired up with the CVT. So it is what it is. But nonetheless, now having done that, let's get set up and let's do a quick little acceleration test here. And let's see how quickly we can get the new 2021 Corolla here up to speed. Here's a straightaway once again. all right it's not the quickest thing in the world but you know what it's all right for a compact car like this it kind of feels like the nissan Sentra that i recently drove quite honestly so it's not going to be as quick as maybe a turbocharged civic but it'll definitely get the job done you shouldn't have any issues with merging onto the highway or anything like that but as always, to go along with that acceleration, braking is equally important. And so when it comes to braking for the 2021 Corolla, it's gonna be the same regardless of trim level that you go with. Up front, you're gonna get 10.8 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 10.2 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, it actually comes in at 119 feet, which is definitely respectable, no issues with that. For comparison's sake, the Honda Civic comes in at 113 feet. Hyundai Elantra comes in at 125 feet, if you wanted to compare that a 
little bit, but overall braking feel has been perfectly fine for me today. So braking is certainly on point with the Corolla. Touching on suspension and handling, up front you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension with a stabilizer bar. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension. Previously in 2019, it didn't used to have that. It used to have the torsion beam rear axle. So I loved in 2020 that they switched it to an independent multi-link. So it is gonna give you better handling than what it used to just in 2019. So do like that. Also starting in the 2020 model year, I wanted to mention this, the Corolla switched to Toyota's TNGA platform, which gave the Corolla a lower center of gravity and 60% more body rigidity as well. So all these things I wanted to mention because it certainly helps with the handling and the fun to drive factor compared to what Corolla's used to be. So typically for the longest time, the Corolla hasn't been all that exciting of a car to drive, but that changed last year in 2020. And again, of course, it carried on to the 2021 model that I am currently driving. So having said that, when it comes to this steering feel in this sport driving mode that I've left it in, it's really nice, actually. I don't mind it. Without that sport driving mode, it's definitely on the looser side. So it depends on what feel you're looking for, I guess. I will say it's not quite as heavy as the Civic or the Nissan Sentra, actually, either. They definitely offer a heavier weighted steering feel, which I personally prefer. But still, it's not bad in that sport driving mode, like I was saying. As far as ride quality goes, I think that's where the Corolla really shines when it comes to its segment. I would say the Corolla definitely has a smoother ride than the Civic and the Sentra. So I definitely do appreciate that cabin noise is perfectly fine as well there's not a whole lot of exterior wind noises coming into the cabin it's pretty much as you would expect a compact car to be when it comes to that and as far as visibility goes i can see perfectly fine out the back typically with sedans you're not going to have any issues there anyway so visibility is definitely on point but that about rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this brand new 2021 toyota corolla all right so here she is you guys the 2021 toyota corolla when it comes to exterior changes the only exterior change was really the addition of that se nightshade edition trim level it gives you numerous black accents on the front lip the emblems the wheels side mirrors door handles rear bumper rear spoiler so essentially sums that one up but so then going ahead and moving up to the front of the Corolla though up front you will actually get LED headlights across the board every single trim level is going to give you LED illumination that's pretty awesome high grade LED headlights come with the SE trim level and up if you want a little better illumination and there's actually an adaptive front lighting system that goes for $2,165 it's actually going to be available for the XLE and the XSE trim levels as a package option if you wanted that LED daytime running lights come standard on all trim levels. A large mesh front grille, again, standard on all trim levels. But having said that, that front bumper design is going to differ between the L and the S trim levels, if you know what I'm saying. The LE and the SC, for instance, is gonna be completely different as far as the front bumper goes. But having said that, let's go ahead and make our way now to the side of the 2021 Corolla. And so to start, black window surrounds do come standard across the board. Body colored power adjustable side mirrors, once again, standard on all trims. And when it comes to those side mirrors, they are actually here for the hybrid trim level and you will get integrated turn signals if you were to go with the XLE or XSE trim levels and again black door handles for the nightshade edition and body color door handles for all other trim levels so I wanted to mention that as well as far as the wheel setup goes 15 inch steel wheels with covers come with the L trim level 15 inch alloys come with the hybrid 16 inch steel wheels with covers come with the LE 16 inch alloys with the XLE and all SE trim levels are going to give you 18 inch alloy wheels on the side there but now let's go ahead and make our way now to the back of this one as far as the back goes you will get a rear spoiler on all se trim levels so we do have the body colored spoiler here the nightshade edition is going to give you a black rear spoiler of course with the black accents trim level badging can be found in the right bottom corner there the rear trunk led taillights actually come standard on all trim levels love that and there is a small rear diffuser if you were to go with one of the se trim levels you guys could see that towards the bottom there single exhaust outlet is going to come with the l l e hybrid and XLE trim levels. However, the SE trims, including that nightshade one, will give you a single exhaust with dual chrome tips. That is, of course, what you were looking at right now. And I think you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. And 
haven't said by now since we are round back, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there is a button on the key fob itself. There's actually also a button on the trunk itself. That is yet another way to go ahead and open that up. But anyways, once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 13.1 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space there if you needed it. Then make our way to the rear legroom. That is going to come in at 34.8 inches. So for reference, I am an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had personally back there. And of course, I'm not adjusting the front seats at all. This is me sitting behind my own driving position. Also for those rear passengers, they will find a rear center armrest with cup holders if you go with the LE trim level and up. That's going to be how you're going to go ahead and get that. And if the rear passengers look forward, there is a little bit of storage in between the seats there looking forward as well. But so then making your way to the front seats, manually adjustable claw seats come with the L, L, E, and hybrid trims. Premium sport fabric seats come with the SE trim level. And I do like the blue accent stitching. I will say that as well. And that, of course, is what you're looking at right now. You will get a soft text upholstery or leatherette finish if you were to go with the XLE or XSE trim levels. Heated seats come once again with the XLE and XSE. And you will find a power driver's seat with power lumbar once again with the XLE and XSE trim levels. But having said all of that, honestly, the seats are quite comfy for me. My short driving stint today, the SE seating at least has been perfectly fine. There's no awkward pressure points or anything like that. So no issues for me there. Taking a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. You will get a leather wrap steering wheel for the SE, the XLE, the XSE, and the nightshade trim. So everything except for the L and LE essentially. Otherwise it's urethane for those two. Then make your way to the startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key here. I love how Toyota labels their key with the individual model. So it does say Corolla on the one side. When you flip it over, it's pretty basic. Lock, unlock, button to pop the rear hatch. But having said that, it is all keyless entry with a push button start. If you were to go with the hybrid XLE or XSE trims, it is optional for the SE that we have today. We actually do have that option. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press the engine start button, which is located just by the driver's right knee there. It's open then once started up as far as the gauge setup goes. Tachometer is all the way to the left. Speedometer is front and center and there is a small digital display all the way to the right, which can be controlled by using the steering wheel mounted controls on the left. Wouldn't have minded if Toyota switched that up, but I'm sure you would get used to it. But nonetheless, there's a ton of different information you could check out within the digital gauge setup, including outside temperature. You could set a digital speedometer up there if you wanted to, how many miles you have left until you hit empty. You could check your miles per gallon at any given time when you need your next oil change. Trip A, trip B, of course, and there's a ton of other stuff, honestly, you could check out up there as well. Then make your way to overall interior quality. A power moonroof comes with the XLE and XSE trims, optional on the SE that we have today. We do have that option, I love that. And for anybody looking for home link controls or the garage door openers, that is gonna be an option for $175. That comes with a frameless rear view mirror as well, so that's there for you. Wireless phone charger is gonna be optional once again with the package deal for XLE and XSE trims. And be lighting, again, a package deal for the XLE and SSE trims if you wanted that. As far as interior quality goes, I was actually kinda surprised. I really like it. I don't think it's quite as nice as the Mazda 3, if I'm being quite honest, but I do like it, I think, better than the Civic. And depending on the trim level, sometimes better than the Sentra, but not always. But my point essentially is the interior quality is just fine for the Corolla. I do like the stitching that goes throughout the dashboard here, just above the passenger side glove box. Love the blue contrast stitching that ties in with the seats that you can find on the doors. Do like that. There's a little bit of storage just in front of the shifter. So that's gonna be there for you as well. There's a couple cup holders just behind behind the shifter, you actually have an electronic parking brake just behind the shifter as well. And when you open up the center armrest, there's a decent amount of storage there, but you actually have a USB charging port within that center armrest and a 12 volt power outlet in there as well. So overall, interior finish is just fine for the Corolla, no issues for me. But so then now let's make our way to the tech display where there is yet another change for the 2021 Corolla. Seven inch color touchscreen display comes with the L trim level. However, all other trims will give you an eight inch color 
color touchscreen display. That is currently what you're looking at right now. And it is a somewhat high quality display. It's not the very highest quality that I've seen, but actually it's not the worst either. It's kind of right in the middle there. Bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard. Android Auto is newly standard for the 2021 Corolla. Apple CarPlay, of course, coming with that as well. And that essentially means if you have a smartphone, simply hook it up to the Corolla. You have free navigation displayed up on that tech display, as well as the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs. And there's a couple other compatible apps you can stream as well. Factory navigation system is optional for the XLE and the XSE trim levels. And of course, you can check out your radio information up there. And by the way, when it comes to the sound system, six speakers across the board, every single trim level. But having said that, there is an optional nine speaker JBL sound system that yet again is part of a package deal that goes for $2,865. That option is available for the XLE and SSE trim levels only. Therefore, we do have the six speaker sound system here with us today. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. Dang, I haven't listened to Red Hot Chili Peppers in quite a while. We'll say bass is not the best, but the loudness is certainly there if you like loud music, man. Definitely more than enough of a sound system for the Corolla. Wouldn't have minded the JBL, but then again, that's why it's there as an option if you wanted a better sound system. So you got a best of both worlds there, I suppose. Last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display though, is when you do put the Corolla in reverse, you of course will find a rear view camera letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so let me first start by saying IIHS top safety pick. That's always something I look for and always something I will mention if it applies to the vehicle I'm reviewing like the Corolla. So you gotta love that. Front side, side curtain airbags, but check this out. Also driver's knee airbag, doesn't always come standard. Passenger seat cushion airbag, almost never comes standard. Rear side impact airbags, usually like a $400 option for BMW and Mercedes, but standard on the Corolla. That's pretty darn cool, I gotta admit. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks back there as well, tire pressure monitoring system, it's all pretty standard at this point. But here's where Toyota really gets it right. Also standard for every single trim level, it's called Toyota Safety Sense 2.0. This gives you a ton of advanced safety features, including pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, lane departure alert with steering assist, automatic high beams, road sign assist, which essentially tells you the speed limit of any given road, love that. Lane tracing assist and dynamic radar cruise control. Some of those, again, optional and even luxury automakers. So absolutely love that. XLE and XSE trim levels also add blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert. And that is actually optional for the SE trim level. Again, we have that option as well today. But overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the 2021 Toyota Corolla, great standard safety. Again, it's an IIHS top safety pick. So when it comes to safety, the Corolla really doesn't get better when it comes to compact cars. Great reliability. You know this is going to last over 200,000 miles, let alone 300,000 even. Good fuel economy. On the constructive criticism side, it's kind of slow. Turbocharged engine, I wouldn't mind it that. It would definitely put it on the same playing field as the Honda Civic. They have a turbocharged engine, of course. A little better acceleration there would be nice. Having said that, I don't think I would want Toyota to do it before they made sure it was completely reliable. And maybe that's what's holding them back because that's really what Toyota is known for, reliability. So. Whenever you're ready, Toyota. <laughs> CVT transmission is somewhat emotionless as well, although they did a decent job of simulating shifting in this. Although for me personally, even if you put a six-speed automatic, a basic six-speed automatic in this thing, it's still better than a CVT. But anyways, lastly, although the suspension and steering feel got better in 2020, it's still not quite as good as some of the competitors that I've driven, like the Civic, like the Mazda 3, and even the Nissan Sentra now is a really good steering feel. But so I wouldn't have minded a little heavier weight to the steering feel, especially maybe even if it's just in that sport mode, that would be fine with me. But Overall, this is definitely a solid pick. If you wanted to save a ton of your money and you wanted an excellent commuter car, this is gonna last you forever. So therefore, it is gonna save you a ton of money there. So Corolla is definitely a solid pick. And that about rounds out this review, you guys. Thank you so much for watching.